You are now looking at the Easter candle from this year, 2020. Every year at the Easter vigil, a new candle is lit, and it burns throughout that year until the following Easter season. It's engraved on there because time is important to us. Hi, I'm Father Ken Metz, retired priest at All Souls Parish here in Sanford, Florida. Time is important for us. St. Athanasius said that the days following Easter, the 50 days following Easter, was the Magna Domenica, that is, the Great Sunday. It says Sunday, every day was Sunday in this time. It was all Sunday, because we were celebrating day after day after day the resurrection of Jesus Christ, the greatest event that ever happened in history. It was so important and so magnificent that they were not allowed to fast during these 50 days. They did not have to kneel in church it's because they were so filled with the great joy of the Easter celebration. The 50 days following Easter was the earliest season in the church. The season meaning the time that the concentration was on one event, the event of the resurrection. Pentecost concludes this 50 days. It's when the Holy Spirit came and to the apostles and, and they were sent out to the whole world to preach the gospel, to, to share the good news with others. This is the centerpiece of their Catholic calendar. However, our calendar is similar to the yearly calendar that you have on your walls, but it's different too. Just like the year that we live in, you know, 12 months, 52 weeks, seven days in a week, uh, 365 days. We have days of celebrations and holidays, and other days are kind of ordinary days. It's designed to mark the passage of time. Because what we do with our calendars, I have a monthly calendar, the parish has a monthly calendar, and what happens is I get to the end of the month, I pull the calendar up, and I look at the next days. It's almost like it's a linear progression. And when you get back to January, you just get another calendar and you just keep right on going. The church calendar is different. I have here an image of a church calendar. In the church, we have six seasons. Advent, and Christmas, and then we have Lent, the three to them, the three days, the three holy days. And then we have Easter. And then we have ordinary time. Sort of the ordinary days in the history of the church. And the purpose of this calendar is not to mark time. The purpose of this calendar is to center on what's here in the middle. The mystery of the redemption of the world by Jesus Christ, how he became man, the incarnation. And all of our seasons here, go at, take a look at each one of those points. Like, for example, let's start over here with Advent. Four weeks of Advent, followed by the, East, the Christmas season, all centering on the incarnation, the fact that God, in the words of St. John, pitched his tent with us. He moved in with us. He became one of us. The next big season are these over here. This is Lent, followed by the tree to womb, and then the Easter season that we're in now, what St. Athanasius called the 50 days, or the 50 Sundays, celebrating the resurrection of Jesus. And all that's left then, and the green sections, is the ordinary time. And the interesting thing is each one of these seasons centers on a particular fact, the incarnation and this one, redemption. Ordinary time 
keeps coming back to these. And at different times of the year, different days of the year, different weeks of the year, and in different years, for that matter, we celebrate the same incarnation, redemption, that's at the center of our year. That's wonderful. It's really great that we take the time out to look at what is going on. And that, of course, is what we're doing now during the season of Easter, during these 50 days that make up that one great Sunday. But as important as they are, there's something else in our church here that I sometimes think we forget. And it is Sunday. Because it's on Sunday that we celebrate both the incarnation, Jesus becoming one of us, dying on the cross, and also his resurrection on every Sunday. That's why even during Lent, even though we wear purple vestments and we're kind of in a time of sadness, we also have that tinge of hope because we know how the story ends. We know about the resurrection. We know that we too are going to be raised up with Jesus Christ when all is done. And so that's sort of the, really the central point about Sunday. If we go back to St. Justin Martyr, who's writing this about 200 of thereabout, he said, we hold our common assembly on Sunday because it is the first day of the week, the day on which God put darkness and chaos to flight in Genesis, and he rose from the dead. In the third century, in another sort of a catechism, an explanation of uh, the, what they call it the teachings of the apostles, was very forceful in describing Sunday worship. They said this, teach the faithful and exhort them to be present at Sunday Mass lest they decrease the church by their absence and deprive the mystical body of Christ of one of its members. They are continued. Because Christ makes himself present as promised and communicates with us. It's in communion. You cannot belittle yourselves nor deprive the Savior of his members. You cannot separate or divide his body. What is that to mean? What is that to say? Well, it's to say not being present affects the body of Christ, that there's something missing when a believer is not there at Mass. And it's interesting to see how Pope St. John Paul II talked about this when he wrote about the Sunday Mass. He said, the early church did not make attendance at Sunday Mass prescriptive. In other words, they didn't say you had to go. Why? Because they wouldn't dream of missing. They wouldn't dream of missing. And he went on to say it was only later faced with the, quote, heart, half-heartedness and negligence of some that the church had to make explicit the duty to attend Mass. And he said, even though they made it the duty, they exhorted people. They didn't sort of make it a law. But in time, it did become a law. Why? Because it's the most important day of the week. Because it celebrates the most important things about what Jesus came to do by becoming one of us and also dying for you and me so that we can live forever. Every Sunday, we celebrate that. We can't get that by taking a walk in the woods. We can't take that by just by sitting down in a corner and making some prayers up. We need to come, as the teaching of the apostles said, as the body of Christ. We need to be there to show we are the living body of Christ today. So that's the bottom line of all of this. During this Easter season, we're celebrating the great Sunday for 50 days. 
And we can celebrate that every Sunday, though. Our most important celebration of the week. So we'll see you again next time. But in the meantime, I would like to encourage you to watch the presentations of our parish. You will find them on our parish website, in Facebook, and also on our YouTube feed. Have a great week. Till next time. Bye-bye.